This episode of Farm Show TV is all about transportation. Today we are at the Viterra headquarters to learn more about marine transportation. Let's do it. Welcome to this episode of Farm Show TV. We are here in Regina at the Viterra headquarters and with me today is Dennis Wilson, manager of marine transportation. Thanks for being here, Dennis. Thanks for having me. So I'm excited to talk to you today about transportation in general and specifically marine transportation, but we should probably address the elephant in the room that is we're here in Regina, Saskatchewan, a landlocked province, long way from any ocean. Tell me about your daily tasks as manager of marine transportation from the prairies. Uh, well, I think uh, through COVID, we've realized that you can work just about from anywhere. True. Um, and this is our headquarters, so this is where most of our groups are focused. So what we're trying to do, and I'm responsible for the domestic and export vessel program, um, which is a lot of forward planning, a lot of changes to plans, everything is constantly in flux. Work very closely with different groups in here in the office, uh, the rail logistics group, trade execution, merchandising, and our terminal operations at the port. And really what we're just trying to do, the uh, uh, marine leg is an extension of our rail uh, pipeline. So we're trying to match up the vessel arrivals with the cargo arrivals and you know, ship our vessels out um, within our contractual requirements. So as, as a farming audience, what farmers know is that the crops that we grow here on the prairies go through a long transportation system. We go, we, it has to go on a truck, it has to go through an elevator system, onto the railway and over to ocean side on a vessel. What, what do you think farmers need to know about that logistic transportation that we may take for granted or may not have access to the, to the information? Well, I think um, everyone sort of understands that freight is a commodity. Ocean freight is no different. Uh, it's an extremely volatile market. Um, the types of ships that carry grain, bulk carriers, they, um, they're traded on a U.S. dollars per day. And that's how the global market works. And we've seen wild fluctuations in the costs. Um, you know, today here we're sitting with most vessels, say around $20,000 a day. Four months ago, that some of them were trading $50,000 a day. So that's quite a swing in values at, you know, $20, $30 a ton difference, um, say for a trip to China from Vancouver. It's extremely expensive. I think farmers can relate to that. Most of the commodities that we grow are also traded you know, on, the, on the global market. We know, we understand that freight can be one of our biggest expenses. And so we try as best we can to figure out how to mitigate that freight expense. It's not something that we have any control over. It's a cost that gets passed down to us at the farm gate. So can you share from your perspective where we might see that freight rate that you talked about, these, these huge swings in freight rates. Is there any way for us to get a grip and, and, and a handle on where those freight rates are going to go? Uh, that's a very difficult question. There's so many factors that go into, uh, into the global market, right? It's, it's not just uh, Canadian exports, it's the overall global movement of dry bulk goods. Sure. So I think that's uh, four or five billion tons a year. There's a lot of volume out there. There's a lot of ships being traded. Uh, and certain factors can, can uh, impact it uh, so quickly. Um, we've seen uh, strong demand out of China push rates higher as they draw in construction materials. Uh, that affects the rates. We have recently saw uh, Indonesia cut their uh, coal exports, which suddenly made the market decline. A lot of ships, a lot of volume moves out of there, and a lot of the things you just can't predict. I suppose if there's one thing we can predict, it's that efficiency of the system, it would have the potential to bring rates down, and inefficiency would add cost. So if I think about some of the recent supply chain disruptions, that would indicate freight rates rising. And probably the biggest one in, in this point of time has been the pandemic. So from your perspective, do you see 
the pandemic, have we got past the majority of that backlog or should we be expecting even further delays in our supply chain? Well, I think the pandemic um, has certainly had an impact. Um, it's surprising how marine transportation has weathered it quite well. Um, I think one of the downsides, unfortunately, is for a lot of seafarers on those ships who cycle on and off, say, every six months. A lot of them were stuck on board for longer periods, you know. So that was tough for them. A lot of countries that were not uh, allowing them to come off, say, to get off at a port to then fly home at the end of their term. Um, and we still see issues today, you know, vessels coming into port and maybe there's a positive case. So then that ship has to quarantine. So then you're not loading that ship. It's just sitting there until it passes. So I don't think we're out of it yet. Um, but also we have many other issues that are still going to be a factor as we've seen recently on the West Coast, the, the flooding. Um, and then prior to that, the wildfires, uh, which affecting rail transportation, but obviously affecting the loading of ships too. Those are um, unprecedented uh, instances and I don't think we're seeing the end of them yet. There's always something coming your way, I'm sure. So let's move to the regulatory piece of tra the transportation industry for you specific. What would farmers find interesting about regulations that you predict are, are coming at us? Oftentimes, you and I talked before about some regulations that are just far surpass where the industry is at today. So regulations don't often make freight cheaper. So what, what can we look at in terms of regulations coming our way and how we can uh, manage what that looks like? Right. Well, the maritime regulatory environment has never been more challenging. Uh, <laughs> that makes me nervous. <laughs> Global reforms combined with individual port regulations are constantly evolving. So we have you know, international regulations, uh, which the International Maritime Organization sets, uh, but there's also individual regional jurisdictional regulations that also have to be considered. So we're not only worried about Canada, obviously we are worried about Canada, but we also have to consider different ports around the world where our ships are going and how that will impact our transportation. So like decarbonization uh, is a very popular topic these days. Um, ships have already, uh, or the marine industry has already been working towards reducing emissions by changing the types of fuel they've used over the last six years. Biodiesel? Uh, well, they've been reducing the sulfur content, uh, which helps reduce the emissions. But there is still longer term goals that uh, have to be met. And yes, the technology is, is not there today to meet those long term goals. And it is a significant investment um, required in R&D to you know, to get to that step. But it's a positive the industry uh, approach is taking is, is very good these days. You mentioned technology, which is such a big part of the agriculture industry. And I found some really fascinating videos online in, in regards to marine transportation and some of the technology that they predict might come. And one of them was electrification of these vessels. And they sure put a, a great story out there, but it's, it's quite interesting to me to see there's no timelines added to that. Is that something I'm going to see? Is electrification of, of vessels that are carrying grain cargo something I'm going to see in my farming career? Or is that just a long ways out? I think it's a long ways out. I think, uh, I think domestically, uh, trucks and, and vehicles have to get that uh, sorted out well before vessels will ever get to it. I think we're leaning more towards biofuels, which I think is good for agriculture. Um, that will certainly help. Um, there's different things that are being talked about and have been tried in the past. Ships reducing speed, reducing speed, burning less fuel, reducing emissions. Uh, but we often find that when the uh, freight markets are strong that uh, ships are less likely to reduce speed because uh, every day is, is money. So they're trying to cycle their vessels as quickly as possible. Sure. Um, when I think about marine transportation and I am keenly interested in the export market, virtually everything grown on my farm is destined for the export market and a lot of what is grown in Canada is destined for the export market. So 
I like to go online and I have got it. I've got the Port of Vancouver app on my phone that I like to click on and see how many grain vessels are sitting at port, how many coal vessels are sitting at port. So that's one way I can access information just as a farmer in Saskatchewan. Mm -hmm. But are there any resources that you would recommend if farmers are interested in hearing more about marine transportation regarding agricultural commodities? Are there any resources that we can go to to look at to gather information besides calling you personally? Yes. Um, <laughs> well, the Port Metro uh, website is great. Um, and you can see the, the list of vessels that are on there. They have an app. Um, I'm fortunate. I'm also on the board of the Chamber of Marine Commerce, which is a uh, a uh, group of marine stakeholders uh, advocating for uh, policy and regulation, primarily Great Lakes, St. Lawrence Seaway, coastal and Arctic regions. Uh, they have a good website, Marine Delivers, and a lot of policy information on there. Yeah, I think those are probably the, some of the best ones. It's certainly because you are working with Viterra, I would say the vast majority of your work is in, the, in agricultural commodities. Do you have any concept of the statistics at, on the Canadian Marines, how important is agriculture in the commodities that we grow at the ports here in Canada? Oh, it's very important. Um, Vancouver uh, is a very diverse port. There's lots of other commodities and obviously containers and a lot of different things going through there. But grain is, is, is very significant. It's one of the top uh, exports. Um, certainly other ports in Canada, Thunder Bay, grain is a huge uh, commodity there. Throughout the St. Lawrence Seaway, a lot of grain ports um, so it's, it's very important. Well, Dennis, it's been a real pleasure to visit with you today and share some information with our viewers about marine transportation. So thank you for taking the time to be here. Great. Thank you very much. Thanks for tuning in to this segment of Farm Show TV. You can watch this episode on marine transportation and all other episodes on our website, canadasfarmshow.com. At Viterra, we believe in the power of connection. Our world-leading agriculture network connects producers and consumers to supply top quality food ingredients each and every day. Our team takes great pride in working closely with farmers to help feed the world. It's something we've been doing for over 100 years. And as an industry leader, we're dedicated to playing a critical role in meeting the needs of a growing world. Because together, we're stronger and achieve more.